Welcome to another Airbrush Asylum video. This is part two of the realistic skull artwork on canvas. I'm working on a 250 by 250 mil canvas. This is pre-prepped, so uh, primed, ready to go. So I'm going to further detail this artwork using uh, sepia. So this is sepia brown mixed with reducer and it's Trident airbrush paint. So you'll notice I'm using a freehand template here. This is the uh, snap dispersion stencil from uh, School of Realism, uh, so developed by Drew Blair in conjunction with Paul McDonald from Air Avengers. I'm going to pop a link in the description to this stencil as well as other products utilized in this video so that you can check them out or purchase if you like. So you'll notice that I'm utilizing this template to get the uh, pitting in the bone on the cranium of the skull. I'm also using it in other areas to create either heavier sort of uh, uh, pitting as well as the softer ones which I'm utilizing the stencil and then moving it in order to create those softer textures. So now I'm doing a little bit of freehand rendering as well. So just uh, up nice and close with my airbrush. And the airbrush that I'm currently using is the Iwata CMC Plus Micron. This airbrush runs a 0.23mm needle nozzle setup. And it has the MAC valve on the front. So that way you can over reduce your paint and you can drop the air pressure uh, at the front of the airbrush so the, the pressure coming from the compressor into your brush is the same you are just uh, restricting the flow within that MAC valve on the front section so that will allow you to really over thin the paint and you can turn that right down to say 5 psi where normally your airbrush would begin to spatter this is going to allow that paint to come out um, at that low pressure and still create nice fine detail. It just might mean that you'd have to coat over that uh, line or shadow a few more times to create uh, decent coverage. But that tends to be the case anyway when you're over reducing your paint like I do. So most of you would probably know if you've been watching my videos uh, that I run at 30% paint, 70% reducer, and that's when I'm using these Trident airbrush paints. So depending on what brand you're using, you may need to adjust that and your level of expertise with the airbrush. As, um, as you go thinner with your paint, you need a lot more control. And also when you do thin out your paint more, I recommend that you drop the pressure down. So I usually run at about 18 to 20 PSI uh, when using any of my microns at that sort of uh, uh, paint consistency. All right, so whereas if I'm using the Eclipse and I want to do some, say, T-shirt airbrushing or I want to um, cover a surface really quickly, I might turn that PSI up to about 30 to 40 PSI and I'll run my paint thicker, so generally at about a 1 to 1 ratio, so equal parts. Um, or slightly a little bit more reducer, say 10% extra if it's a humid day, um, depending on your climate, obviously, and where you live. So just keep all that in mind. There is really no exact perfect uh, setup that will um, give you the optimal performance. It's just you've got to play around with it yourself and find out what that is for your skill level, uh, your temperature, and what you're airbrushing. So you see here I've switched to another texture template. This is Texture 5 by Airshot Stencils. 
and you can see I'm using some of those larger sections uh, to create some of my sharper shading within the uh, bone section of the eye sockets. So this uh, template has numerous different parts that are handy. You can see that little bit there that I sprayed works really well for the cracks. And the beauty of using a template like this is that you can lightly dust it and you're still going to get that sharp edge. Whereas if you're trying to achieve that extremely uh, sharp edge using the airbrush freehand, you would have to be up extremely close and therefore your paint is going to be applied darker unless you of course mix up a lighter tone of that colour which means a lot more time mixing you know, different colours. So I do hope that you're enjoying this video so far. If you haven't already, be sure to check out part one of this tutorial. This is a three-part tutorial. Uh, so in part one, obviously, we showed you how I got up to this stage within the artwork, and now I'm further detailing. And if this is the first time watching one of my videos, then welcome for all our regular viewers. Welcome back. And feel free to hit subscribe, tap on that bell icon, that will notify you every time I put out new content. And if you are enjoying this uh, video and our content, by all means, give it a like, share it out, and let's build this airbrushing community together. So you'll notice that when I am airbrushing up close, I've got that air pressed down at all times. I mean, you should do that regardless if you're close or further away. 
uh, to really use the double action airbrush correctly keep the trigger pressed down at all times and just pull back a little bit as you're moving with the airbrush so obviously the more you pull back when you're up really close the more chance it has to spider out on you so you need to make sure that you're controlling that trigger carefully also think it's a good idea especially if you're sort of new to airbrushing to have a bit of scrap paper next to you and then that way you can practice these fine strokes before you do them on your artwork So you really notice throughout this video that the airbrush is moving further away from the surface to apply a uh, softer shadow and I'm building it up. I'm not trying to oversaturate one particular area. I'm going very, very carefully and building it slowly. I'm also being careful not to go over all of our initial color that we did in parts one of this video. So just um, follow your reference and if you follow that accurately, that's going to help to create this uh, particular more realistic skull. The template that I'm using, or that I just used then, was the fire tool template, just one of the templates out of that set. So you can see how handy those uh, shapes are within doing any sort of artwork. So they can be applied to whatever you're painting, just to get that real nice sharp defined edge.
So just deepening up a few more of these uh, shadows here within the bone. A couple of the cracks as well. So further deepening some of those real solid shadows. Continuing to add more and more texture freehand. So using some stippling methods in certain areas, as well as obviously up nice and close to get the cracks a little bit further away for some of the softer shading and the sharper shadows. So even though I'm further away, I'm still controlling where that uh, shadow needs to go, trying to contain my overspray. You can help by angling the airbrush if, um, if you don't want to use a shield, so angle it away from the edge that you want to remain sharper. If you are going to do that, be sure that you can accommodate the overspray on the other side of that. So if you're angling it sort of towards the left, then whatever's on the left of that, where the overspray, the direction of the overspray is going to go, you want to make sure that can get some sort of overspray on it. Otherwise, I recommend keeping the airbrush straight level to the surface and just controlling it by moving up closer to get a sharper shadow or utilizing a freehand template. So again, utilizing this texture template laying it flat to get some of those real defined uh, edges and then you'll notice I'll be spraying through it and also moving it to create a softer texture. So again really play around with your texture templates, see what sort of uh, effect you're trying to achieve and um, you know, lift it up off the surface, lay it flat, move it around, whatever you need to do to get a variation of texture always looks better. You want a more organic feel.
So finishing off a few of the uh, shadows and wrapping up part two of this tutorial. Until next time, I do hope that you enjoyed watching this video and I'll see you again very, very soon in the next tutorial. Bye for now.